How does this thing even... Oh! Long time no see! So, some of you guys may have seen this video, but here's how I went to the moon while sitting in my garage. Now, if you don't know the story, I needed ideas, right? I'm not the smartest person in the world, okay? I went along to a random plot generator and clicked enter, and this is what it gave me. It's a steampunk story about mind swapping. It kicks off in an observation post with the arrival of a powerful space-faring clan. A powerful space-faring clan? No, not all is as it first appears in the story. All right, let's, uh, let's see if we can make this into a half decent story. I don't know what I'm even doing. By the way, this series is gonna be split up into three parts, so make sure you subscribe to be notified when the next episode comes out. So how did I achieve this effect? Well, I basically did a rough head replacement, so let's get into that. First, find a model of a spaceman. Has to be rigged, relatively high polys, and it has to be relatively cheap if you know this channel. The model I used was from CG Trader, and it was only 38 bucks. That's pretty decent. Second, we have to go out and shoot our footage. Now I knew I had to track my upper body, so what I did is I got some tape and just put it all around myself, and now I look like a lunatic, and yeah, I can't help it sometimes. For lighting, I used the Gotex SL60W uh, as like the main key light, and it was kind of meant to be like a moon or something that's shining on my beautiful face. And I also just used a couple panel lights just to light up the background behind me, so it was nice and even. Keep in mind, we also want to make sure that these tracking markers are clean and accurate. I went through a couple test rolls trying to figure out how I could go about putting a flag in the ground while I was moving my arm or something like that. Um, turns out it just made it a whole lot worse because the tracking markers were moving with my shirt. So don't do that. Keep it clean and we can try and animate it later in uh, Cinema 4D. Step three, open Cinema 4D and we can get started. Once we have imported our FBX model because this is what I'm using, we'll see our texture starting to be uh, created in Cinema 4D. Most models online will show you what platforms they can be used in. Um, usually an FBX is standard across everything. so. That's not working, I'm not 100% sure why. Next, we can jump into Octane's node editor. From there, we can start leaking back our textures. Most textures we use are diffuse slash base color, ambient inclusion, normal map, roughness, and usually a metallic or um, you know, shine kind of thing. Here's a great video that shows how these textures work and how you can import them and make them look realistic. Number four, now this is probably the most intense part of the video. We're gonna go track all those tracking points that we put on our shirt before. In the motion tracker tab, click motion tracker. From here, we can load up our footage. You can also increase the resolution if you're having a hard time seeing the markers. From there, we can go into the manual tracking tab. Control click to create a tracking marker. We're gonna go through and individually track each of those markers. We need eight key tracking markers. Don't know why I did four. We need eight key tracking markers, but I like to just add in a bunch more because you never know um, how much data it really needs. Undoubtedly, there's gonna be some errors, so let's fix those up. To fix these errors, scrub through the timeline and adjust the mistake on the marker. Press G and F to go back and forth. The marker should update once you've adjusted. And that's the process. Continue to repeat, and as I mentioned, we want eight key, eight key markers. <laughs> Number five, see, I'm good at my hands. From there, we can create an object tracker. Go back into the motion tracker and highlight your manual points. Go back into the object tracker and click Assign Selected. Go into the Reconstruction tab and press Run 3D Solver. We should now have a camera and some tracking points that are in a null. Number six, now we can go back and grab our materialized spacesuit, bring it into the project, and now it's pretty much a matching game to figure out how this whole thing goes together. Make sure the spacesuit is a child of the tracking null. Keep in mind that you also have to change the scale settings to scale object, otherwise there's gonna be a heap of issues. Um, and I didn't know this for a very long time, and I was like, why is everything going everywhere? Also, you can change the viewing option to X-ray to see through the suit. Now, this is also the point where we can add in some extra animations through the suit rig. I then animated the shoulders and arms to make it look a little more natural with my movements. All right, now we have to match the scale with the camera, otherwise there's gonna be a massive headache later on. Now, I actually had a lot of trouble with this because I couldn't figure out why this was happening. Basically, if I didn't adjust it properly or copy over the nulls, whenever I close the project, it'd reset and just throw my character far away. So this is how to solve that problem. What we're gonna do is transfer over our data from the tracking null onto a fresh new null. Make sure that the timeline is at the first frame and don't move the timeline. We can take our spacesuit out of the parent null From there, you can go into the object tracker coordinates, left click the track and copy them. Go back to your spacesuit and press paste track. Do this for all the points just to be safe. Fingers crossed your tracking markers have now been moved over and added incorrectly. I added this figure which I could put in my rough height so I could match the spacesuit to roughly how tall I would be and where my head's at and stuff. 
Now, our spacesuit may be actually a little too perfectly attached to the tracking markers that were on our chest. We can see this as some of the tracking markers bump around when we're trying to play through the timeline. To smooth this out, we can trim some of the keyframes. To do this, open up the F-curve editor and open up the spacesuit null. Highlight all the tracks, go to function, delete every nth frame. We're gonna try trimming every two frames. This will trim every couple frames depending on the number you put in. Now lighting is key to creating a somewhat realistic effect. I only use an octane panel light, I changed it to a sphere and added it in roughly where a planet or moon would be in the scene, um, just so it matches kind of the original lighting setup we shot on the day. From there, the last thing to do is correctly set our focal point so we have a nice depth of field and we can export. We can add in an octane camera to our main camera. From there, we can adjust the aperture, focal length and add some motion blur. Now I exported three layers. I exported a normal diffuse layer of the astronaut suit, uh, a reflection layer of the glass and also an alpha layer of the glass as well so we can cut that out and make, play around with that in After Effects. To get the reflections you see here, I actually had to set up kind of an altered scene where I added more lights in and some background textures just to kind of give it a bit more space. Now there's technically no wind in space but I thought it'd be pretty funny to add in a flag where there was a little bit of wind because you know it was all faked right? The tutorial for the flag and the moon set will be in another video. Next step is all about compositing. This is very very quick because we don't actually have the moon set just yet. When the video comes out, make sure you go check that out and then you can come back here and we can go from there. For the spacesuit, we can add in the reflection pass, the diffuse layer and the alpha channel. We can then add in our original footage that we shot, uh, making sure to key out the background. Make sure you check the description, there are a bunch of videos in there um, about some really great tutorials on the keying. Then we can use our visor alpha as a luma mat for our head. We can then go through and adjust the saturation, curves and opacity even for the visor to make it kind of look a little bit more natural. For this shot I literally googled the moon on transparent. I also googled a bunch of starry night photos and then jump into After Effects and add them in as a background. Add in some curves and start trying to match the highlights and the shadows as well as the colors. And bingo! There you go, you've kind of already just created a spacesuit while sitting in your garage. You're on the moon now. Well done. Hopefully you guys liked the video. I'm not gonna tell you to like and subscribe. You can choose to do that on your own. Uh, but basically, stay tuned. Next episode will be coming out next week, hopefully. And then we can go from there. And yeah. This is how you create a spacesuit while sitting in your garage. Peace.